Okay, so in the second part of the tutorial, what I'm going to do is talk you through the tutorial and how that is developed. So if we just go to the top of the tutorial, which is available for download, if you want to save yourself some typing. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is just ignore the, uh, the namespaces and the inputs because we'll be looking at those as we go along. The next thing we have a method for newbar. Now, if you were to go to the standard trade station activity bar programs, you'll see that uh, they have some inbuilt ways of finding where well, you'll notice previously when we went, when we drew these things, we're changing the color and we're changing the text in a bar for each uh, activity bar within the bar. And uh, they have some uh, functions that take care of that. We're not using those. I've redeveloped uh, or I've developed a little method to, to do that. And uh, you might be interested at looking at both of those. But let's just skip beyond that for the moment and look at the first thing, which is the time and sales provider, which you can see I've got set up here in a once statement. Now, as I've said before, the easy way of doing this, if you are creating a program is just go to toolbox, find the time and sales provider, which is here. If it's not there, you can right click at the top and say, choose items and find it. If it is there, you double click that and then go to properties, and then make sure everything here is as you want it. So real time, yep, we're gonna load it. So we change that to true, uh, probably change the name. It's a little bit long, bids, true, asks, true, and so on. Just change those to be what you want them to be. And having done that, essentially, this has created the code that you're gonna need in the designer generated code. And what you can do there is cut and paste that code and cut that into the program similar to the way that I have done that in the one statement. Now, one of the things that I've added here, which is something that you can use and reuse in other programs, is we're determining if the chart is a local or exchange time or the symbol that we've got loaded. And uh, so you can use the code here to do that. Then the other thing uh, I forgot to do just then, let me just uh, create another one of those, is once we have that selected, we go to properties and if we go on the events button there and we click on up updated and double click quickly there, we'll see that that also sets us up a update event. And if you look at our program, you will see that we have the code for the update event. And that is similar to what we're gonna be using uh, later on in our program. In fact, uh, we have that code here and what I've done is added some more code to that. So let's just get rid of that. That was just to demonstrate how you can create this. So let's go back to the one statement. You can see that's essentially just setting up the time and sales provider. So the next thing we wanna do is we need to do something when that updates and there are uh, a number of uh, useful bits of information available for this. But what we're doing is if we're saying, if args.reason is something has been added, then we take the type, and this is a, we're setting up as a local variable in the method. The type is equal to args.data.tick type, and the price is equal to args.data.price. So we can say if type equals time and sales item tick type dot trade. In other words, this is a trade. It's not just a, a, a bid or an asset. An actual trade has um, taken place at, um, at the particular value. And the size of that trade is greater than min trade size. Now that is a user input. So we're filtering out the smaller trades. So we've got a trade, it's bigger than the user input. We say if the price, and remember here, this is the price of the, uh, the trade, is equal to the price of the last bid, then we, we've created a counter and we're gonna increment that counter. That is the trade at bid counter. Uh, else, if it's the price of the last ask, then we add uh, increment the trade at ask counter. There, having done that, uh, 
if it's not a trade, if something's happened but it's not a trade, then what we need to do is if it's an ask, we're going to store the uh, the last ask um, equal to the price. And similarly, if it's a bid, so we keep a record of what the last ask and the last bid is. So what this is doing essentially is just incrementing those counters. And what we do lower down in the program is once um, every time we get a new bar within the activity bar, then we set those counters to zero. This is right at the beginning of the, the, uh, the end of the program. Okay, so that is the one statement setting up the time and sales provider and also the update event. And what I've also got here is a method which I'm using to change the label and the color of the segments in the activity bar. So the uh, the important thing about this is it needs to detect when the, the big bar, the uh, data one bar finishes. It also needs to detect when the little bar, the activity bars are finished. And the way we do this for the activity bars is that uses uh, data 51. So if bar status 51 is equal to two, it's the end of one of those bar. And what I've also said, or T activity data, time of the activity data is not equal to time of the previous activity data bar. Um, and CC is equal to CC last big bar. And what this is doing is storing the bar number of the, the big bar, the data one bar. And what we do each time we store the, um, the CC as the, let's just go down and look at the code. This is outside the method. And what we're doing in the main program, every, uh, every time the program runs, we're saying that the CC last big bar is equal to CC. So current uh, bar number effectively last tick. And then the CC itself is current bar of data one. So store the current bar number of data one. So let's just look at the method again. So we have an activity bar and it is an activity bar within the big bar because the big bar number hasn't changed. Then if that happens, what we do, we can increment the color. If the color goes above 16, we go back to one. And uh, so we're just using uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, etc. cetera, uh, 16. And then we've got this, this thing where we change the, uh, the, uh, the back, if it's equal to the background color, then we increment it one uh, more. And then we increment the uh, the label index and we go through those uh, one, two, three, four, five, up to 35. And then we get which label. We've set up a string at the beginning, which, uh, which you probably saw. That is this one here, last label, A, B, C, D, E, etc. And uh, what we do is we find which label it is using mid string. So that is using the string that we've got and the next label index, which is the number that we're incrementing. And then we're just taking one value from that string. Okay, so that is what that method does. Essentially provides us with knowledge of when we've got a new activity bar and, uh, and it goes through and changes and updates the label string for the for the cells and also the colors. So that is the bulk of the program. But uh, what we need to do now in the program, we've already already explained the current bar number. We call the new bar method every time the program runs, and that's what's going to update the the letter the letter in the cell and the color of the cell. We call that each method. We also need to set up the AB set row height. Now this is a function that comes with the activity bar and this uses a user input which is approximate number of rows and what it does it sort of works out the height of those rows because uh, obviously they are going to vary a little bit depending on how big the bars are. So that's all essentially the setup but then what we need to do is every time we uh, we have an activity bar is we need to go through and we need to add cells according to how many times we've got trades occurring at the bid or the ask and that is what we do here. So we go uh, value one to the min list of the max weight and trade at bid counter and then we use just the uh, the standard function for the activity bar a b add cell range and we have the uh, the high of 
the activity data, low of the activity data. This one we're putting on the right hand side, the label that we're calculating in the met method and uh, the color number that we're getting from the method and we just add those cells. And then, as I've said before, finally, we just reset those counters as we move into the next activity bar. So uh, this, uh, this program provides information that potentially may be useful for you, or maybe you can think of another way of programming this to provide something that you might find even more useful. So as I say, I'm going to put a link to a TradeStation video that I think uh, I think is useful. And you may just need to uh, watch that a couple of times just to get uh, a greater understanding of how activity bars work. But uh, certainly I think they're uh, a very useful concept in TradeStation. And again, this program is available for download at the tutorial page. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you.